I will. See, you have to take my <laughs> These it, are my regular glasses. You look very scholarly. Mm -hmm. I will I call us to order. Um, and we have need of executive session to conduct strategy, strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-unit personnel, as well as to comply with or act under the authority of Mass General Law specific to the review of the executive session minutes for the meetings of October 19th, 2017, and, to recon and we will reconvene in open session. So I just need a motion. So moved. And a second. A second. Um, okay, and so Nina? Yes. Jen? Yes. Nancy? Yes. And I'm a yes. Um, so we will go over there and um, we will come out and get Carol in a minute and then we'll keep going forward. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you.
Okay, very good. Um, we have we have your name tags, uh, your name badges, right where we're going to put the <laughs> the laptop. Um, is this? I'm going to turn this up to the maximum so people can hear you. But tell me if it's a little more Gene Birchman than you're looking for. Is that too loud for you, or does that? Not okay, all right. You can, well, that makes sense. You control your own volume. So I'm going to I'm going to do this so that. Hang on. Let me go behind myself with the cord. Sure. I think it's hilarious that we're relying on me to get the technology, but I think that we've done it. So that's good. I know. I think it's hilarious that John is in London. And I, we are, I just told my husband, I said, this is crazy. Like, so amazing what technology can do. I know. It, it is truly the 21st century now. Okay. Um, so I don't know where you want to look. Can you see me at least peripherally? What's that? I think the camera's still not activated. Oh, right. You can't, it doesn't matter. You can't see anything, so I'll just... Okay. Put it anywhere. All right. Good point. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I, that I don't know how to fix. I think Sarah... Just Here, that's the main thing. And you already know the... You could probably watch it on HCAM, actually, on your laptops if you wanted to see. And you certainly know the presentation. So Two laptops. You have dueling laptops. Okay. Mm. All right. So are we... Bob, are you ready? You're ready. Oh, I'm on. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> well, um, okay. Welcome to the January 11th uh, school committee special meeting and public hearing. We did uh, open our meeting at 6.30 because we had need of an executive session to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-unit personnel, specifically the um, superintendent of schools. and. That also to comply with or act under the authority of Mass General Laws specific to the review of the executive session minutes for the meetings of October 19th, 2017. And then we are now reconvening in, executive, in open session. And I would just like to make sure that the record does reflect that Mr. Graziano is joining us via remote per participation under the town remote participation policy, as is Dr. McLeod. So we do have a full committee. Um, they just are not all physically present, so we will all be participating tonight as well. And given the um, remote participation, all of our votes will be taken by roll call vote according to the policy. So without further ado, I will ask that we all stand and um, that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, so as you know, <clears throat> tonight is our public hearing on the budget. I'll read through the agenda quickly and then we will just get going. So first we will have our regular section uh, for public comment. Mm -hmm. Following that we will opening, open the public hearing. Um, Ms. Rothermick will be making the presentation tonight. Then we will hear from any members of the public that would like to um, discuss the budget with us and share their questions, comments, concerns. Following the closing of the public budget, we will hear another report to the school committee, which is our athletic season update and recognitions by Ms. King. Uh, following that, under new business, we have two items. First, we will vote on the superintendent's recommended budget, and we will also vote on the superintendent's contract for our incoming superintendent, Dr. Kavanaugh. Following that, we'll have our second opportunity for public comment. On the agenda, it lists a second opportunity for executive session, but we have no need of that, um, and so we are hopeful that we will adjourn at around 8.30. So without further ado, first I will, um, I would like to just describe public comment that we have re received, um, and then uh, if there's anybody else here that would like to comment during the public comment section, we will hear you then, and then we'll go right into the public hearing. So we have received public comment um, on the budget from three people in the community, um, one expressing concerns about reductions being made um, are being proposed at the high school. Another expressing concern about reductions being proposed at the middle school, as well as expressing some concern about, uh, both actually expressing some concern about um, the level of transparency in terms of the presentation and 
um, not being able to necessarily ascertain which specific positions are being referred to. Um, and then we also had an email from um, a member of the community who did quite a thorough analysis actually of class size at the Marathon School and is recommending that we consider reducing um, the kindergarten teachers from by one for next year as well as the first grade teachers by one for next year given the constraints of this year's budget. So that is all the public comment that I received through email. I don't know if the rest of you received any that you'd like to record no. okay so is there anybody in the audience who would like to come up and comment at the public comment section okay so then um, we will open the public hearing it is 703 um, and I will ask Ms. Rothermick to lead us through the budget presentation and then we'll invite people up that would like to comment Thank you and good evening. Um, we didn't know which computer would hook up, so I have used Dr. Kavanaugh's, which is why we have two up here. Um, so tonight what we will do is go through the, the budget for fiscal year 19. Um, as you know, the budget is a long process. There's many meetings, um, many discussions, building principles. Um, we're looking at data, we're looking at projections. All of this over several months, um, really to ensure a responsible budget that also strives for the continued excellence that we have here at Hopkinton Public Schools. So as you can see, the bottom line at this point in time um, is a 7.3% increase. And while we recognize that this increase is over the guidance that was provided by the, the town, um, we do believe at this point in time that this is the, the best um, budget that we can do that, again, reflects the, the needs of Hopkinton Public Schools. Um, it is reflective of the projected enrollment. It is also reflective of, of opening the new Marathon School. And while we understand this is a difficult budget year, really town-wide, so not just the school department are, are facing um, increases that are over, over guidance, um, it really is a, is a town-wide as we address the growth that, that is happening and the um, continued excellence in both education and safety throughout, ta throughout the town. So as I said, throughout the um, many months, we have several meetings and continue to um, make changes to the budget. So since Oct uh, December, some of the things that have changed within the budget, this budget now assumes an athletic fee increase from 110 to $200. It assumes a reinstatement of the parent supply list, as was discussed. Additional reductions have been um, found for 3.0 FTE, one at high school, Hopkins, and Marathon. There's been an increase in the professional development around the literacy program. It is eliminating the iPad refresh for the Elmwood School. There's an additional increase of 183,000 plus for the school bus um, bid that came in. And there has also been an additional reduction to the salary reserve. So as you can see, what is consistent over time is the school department budget is the majority is payroll. It is personnel and staff. And that, that split of 80-20 is something that you'll see consistently um, over many years. What you do see in FY19 is a, is a beginning of a slip of the, from 82 to 80 and the expenses from 18 to 20. And you'll see later on in some of these slides where some of these expenses of opening a new school, um, special education needs are really non-discretionary and are beginning to drive our budget and increase our expenses. So again, going back to guidance, it, the guidance for the budget was a 3.5% increase. 
if we only had to address staffing and enrollment changes and, and staffing uh, accordingly, that change would have been 3.6%. But the, all the other changes that are driving this budget, again, add up and bring us to 73 So the budget drivers from the expense side, special education is an increase of 2%. Central office, this is the new bus contract. It's an estimate, plus there has been one additional bus added, and again, that's for enrollment to be, our buses are at capacity. Building and grounds, it, that is your utilities, mostly for the marathon school. Technology, the curriculum, professional development, regular education, and occupational day are all much smaller. So the expense driven um, is 3.7% increase. Then when we look at salary, the other part of the, of the budget, so the salary increase before any reductions is 2.9%. That's our existing staff. As we go through and um, need to add staff and, and uh, address both the enrollment, changing program needs, there's always an ask of how can we do things better, how can we do things differently, and you know it's that continual improvement. So you can see the reductions that the building principals were able to find that will then um, offset some of the additions that needed to be made. So there was a 1.9% reduction for the personnel. So you can see at the end, we're at a 1% increase. So taking that 1% increase, the rest of these are enrollment driven personnel increases. Uh, elementary teachers, 7.0. Specialists, as you increase uh, sections, you need to also increase the specialists. Uh, math coach, adjustment counselors, a custodian, that's for the new building. L teachers, 2.0. We've actually already hired one of those, and that is um, the changing demographics of the, the students that are entering the school district special education coach, and then other support personnel. So those new requests, then on top of all those reductions, again, gets us to that 3.6% salary increase. So in summary, when you look at our, our budget drivers just in a different way, uh, you have your salary increases. Again, it's your existing staff, then your personnel reductions, and new personnel requests and those add up to that 3.6%. Then you can see where we get into really what are non-discretionary. Your expenses for special education, for the bus contract, for utilities, and occupational day, all of those are, are non-discretionary and we don't, there's not much we can do about those increases. And then you get down to very small percentage, that 0.25 other expenses, which is technology, curriculum, and regular education, and that's district-wide, of course. So that gets us back to that 7.3% increase. And again, this is just another way of looking at how the budget increase is, is driven. So something to keep in mind, not only when we're looking at our enrollment changes, when students move in and um, we need to meet those students where they are. And so we need this drives some of our changes in services. So you can see with the enrollment changes, with those incoming students came changes in our L population and then changes in the IEPs. So this is just a snapshot of not only is it enrollment driven, but then some of these students that are coming in require services that we now need to provide as well. So this gives you our class size, K to eight. Um, the first column shows our actual enrollment as of October 1st. And then this last column shows our projected enrollment, and this is according to the NESDEC report for September 1st. We're very comfortable with these projections. They have been very close throughout the years. So you can see where our class sizes are projected to be based on the staffing that we have in, in this budget. Um, so these are the class sizes that we're striving for. Um, again, it's to continue that excellence within the district that is expected not only by 
the school committee, but by the, the community at large. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to provide a little bit of background for people who are who are just joining the process at this point, um, just in terms of what the timeline and process has been to this point. Um, and, and our budget timeline is posted on our budget page on our website. But just for those of you who are listening, we did start this um, budget process in August. Um, by meeting with the town manager and the chair of the board of selectmen to talk about budget parameters and um, provide some direction. There was a joint meeting in September, on September 12th, with the Appropriations Committee, the board of selectmen, and the school committee, and that's what you're hearing referenced around um, the guidance that we were given around a 3.5% increase to our FY18 budget is what the town would be able to afford for FY19. And just to put context on what those numbers mean, our FY18 budget was $42,591,311, so a 3.5% increase would be $1.49 million. Right now, as you just saw, our increase is $3.1 million, which is the 7.3% increase. So just to help myself and provide a little bit of context, what that basically means is at this point right now, we're $1.6 million above what the town has um, has told us they can reasonably allocate to us for this year. And, and as Ms. Rothermick said, all the town departments are having a similar problem. So um, we will be working together collaboratively to solve that problem. But I just wanted to frame that for people who are listening and watching. Um, and, and again, just to get back to our timeline, since September 12th, we've had a series of six or seven um, very long budget meetings November 2nd was the first time that we had the preliminary budget presented to us. We met individually with every department head um, to go through every department budget. Um, and we do have a deadline according to the charter or the agreement made under the charter um, to submit our budget to the town manager by January 12th, which is tomorrow. So tonight we do, we are required to take a vote and move the budget forward. Um, so that's just the context that we're working in. I want to make sure that everybody was sort of on the same page in terms of their understanding. And so I will now stop talking and invite anybody in the public that is here who would like to ask questions, share their comments, feedback, concerns, um, please come right on up. We'll ask that you sit over here and speak into the microphone so that HCAM can record it. And if you can just give us your name um, as you start, that would be great. Uh, good evening. My name is Sterling Worrell. I'm a Hockington resident and a 17-year veteran teacher at the high school. I'm just concerned. I wanted to just quickly sort of uh, state the staff teacher reductions in a different way. We talk about FTEs and attrition and things like that. But I, 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 I just wanted to say that instead of saying like 1.6 FTEs, from what I can gather from my research, at the high school, we're losing an art teacher, a librarian, a tech integration specialist. At the middle school, we're losing a science teacher, a history teacher, foreign language teacher and a part-time librarian. When you say it that way, I, I think it uh, really uh, better shows the potential effects of these cuts. Great, thank you. And just so you know, that was part of all of the discussion when we had the individual presentations with the principals. So, you know, we do have the shorthand and particularly, as you know, with the high school, Everybody isn't a full time. There's a lot of point this and point that. So yes. I, I do understand that it's confusing. It took me a lot of years to figure out what all those point whatevers were. So um, so thank you. I, I understand it's not necessarily as clear as it might be when you're just. Yeah, I mean, I understand all that. It just seems well, like I, we don't want to say this. We're cutting well, we do want to be a science of, teacher, a history teacher, a foreign positions. language teacher, an art teacher. Yeah, we want to be respectful not to talk about employees directly too yeah. legally. So. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Hello, everyone. I know you all know me, but <laughs> for the camera, um, my name is Colleen Janino, and I'm the subject matter leader for visual arts in the district. 
I acknowledge and respect that this is a difficult budget season and in no way am I undermining the work that has gone into it, but I am here this evening to be the voice of my department with my heart on my sleeve <laughs> and express my disappointment and concern of the recent proposed cut to our department at the high school. I have a lot to say, so if you need to cut me oh, anywhere. Go right ahead. While physically, the art department consists of a small group of individuals compared to other departments in our district, we make a significantly large impact on our students. I can't sit here and share test scores, but you know I can remind you all of the many opportunities we have provided for our students. They have won countless scholastic art awards, silver and gold keys. They have been awarded seats annually at Art Allstate. Participate in nationwide competitions, such as Congressional Art Awards. They've been juried into statewide opportunities, such as the Emerging Young Artists Exhibition at UMass Dartmouth. We've provided opportunities for students to share their work within the community, both in and out of the schools with our annual art exhibit, our annual, annual honors exhibit at the HCA, We've given our students opportunities to be published in-house and in the state of Massachusetts in publications such as the Marble Collection. We have also given our students the opportunities to be part of the larger world outside of here, and that's important. They have spoken on our behalf at conferences at MassQ, ed tech conferences at Harvard Business School, and they've worked with community organizations such as Hopkinton Organizing for Prevention, Hopkinton Diversity and Cultural Alliance, the 26.2 Foundation, and the 300th Committee. The high school art students give back and donate their time as volunteers at Elmwood in the HPTA Enrichment Clay Creations course. Our students in the 18 to 22 program have been volunteers in the elementary art rooms. Our students have been docents at the Danforth and volunteer at the HCA, and we have brought in numerous artists and designers, most of which are former HHS students, to share with our current students real world experiences and have provided countless other cultural experiences from trips to the ICA, the MFA, the Worcester Center for Crafts, the Worcester Art Museum, Massachusetts College of Art, etc. I do have a point to this, I will get to it. The art department staff members are large contributors in this school. Where there are creative minds, there are creative, new, and innovative solutions. Over four years, we have implemented four new grants. My department members have written countless proposals and have pre presented at the National Art Education Annual Conference, the Massachusetts Computer Using Education Annual Conference, They've conducted PD in other districts and hosted numerous districts to come observe the amazing things they do. They establish <coughs> ongoing relationships with our community members, some of which have already mentioned the HPTA, 26.2, HCA, Poly Arts, and in return have been given numerous donations that help support their programs. They contribute their voices on blogs and in personal learning networks and are used as exemplars within their own schools. They present during staff meetings and professional development and have co-taught cross-curricular offerings. They do this because they are passionate about art. It's important to education and its impact on our students. This fall when I came to present, I expressed how at the high school we have 770 students that were enrolled for this school year. That's 66% of the student body. Out of the entire high school population, 226 of these students elected our ceramic subject as their first choice. 300 of, 308 of them elected it as an alternative and 184 students were enrolled. This subject has provided students with other things that other subjects can't. In an exit survey, they were asked, what is one thing you took away from taking this class that you wouldn't have gotten from taking any other course in this school? And here are some responses. The ability of having patience and working with mistakes instead of trying to erase them all together. I realized how important it is to wait for pieces of art to take form and pace myself. I also realized how every moment could be precious and not take it for granted. One thing I took away from this was how to be very hands-on and getting to make something from scratch. I learned how to create projects that I never 
could create without clay. As an artist, I found it so important to have another form of media for expression. That's from a high school student. I learned that trying new things could be a great way to de-stress. One thing I took away is that it was one way to express your artistic ability in a three-dimensional way. Drawing is not a specialty, specialty for me, so this was the best art class for me. And it's stress relieving to play around with clay and try to make something out of it. In this class, I learned that my self-worth is not defined by my academic abilities. Our day is filled with so many expectations and so little room for mistakes. But when we walk into ceramics, it is a place intended for us to make mistakes. This class gives you freedom to think divergently, initiating your projects rather than being told there is a specific answer you have to reach. The ability to work with your hands rather than being cognitively challenged with material that is always just slightly too hard gave me an enormous stress relief throughout the semester and I watched myself grow enormously. At the high school, we have put a huge emphasis on the importance of our students' social emotional learning to the degree that we have made it part of our school improvement plan with continued efforts to de-stress. I just want to remind the town that we need to retain programs like this in our schools to help students relieve stress and to learn important life skills like learning to cope with making mistakes and problem solving their way through them. This is more than just filling classes. This is more than numbers. Our students are inundated with test scores and are entrenched in their own social culture to increase their GPAs. I recognize our district needs supports in other areas as we saw. <laughs> but what happens when you start to chip away at programs like art that do help our increasingly diverse student population in unique ways? Often, these supports look to us to help their students. To quote a special education staff member that I've worked with in these classes for the last 12 years, she said, this class itself is a very social environment and provides many opportunities for special needs students to foster relationships with typical students. Both students learn, grow, and benefit from these relationships. Ceramics is a class that can be designed around every student's ability. It can be extremely difficult working on fine skills or fairly simplistic. It depends on the student's abilities and motivation. The class can meet the student's needs from day to day. If I know my student has had a really difficult day, I will hand them a chunk of clay and let them manipulate it in any way they want. When they seem ready, I'll sit next to them and talk about their day and process through what may be bothering them. Some days it just takes a simple ball of clay to turn a student's day around. We take pride in providing a variety of choices in our high school department. And we pull from our own areas of expertise to provide our students with authentic experiences. I feel we need this additional area of expertise in our department. From a district perspective, in this role the last three and a half years, I've been concerned about the fact that we don't offer kindergarten art. I worry about losing FTE from my department that will make it even harder for me to fight for that additional FTE for kindergarten moving forward. With the student body increasing rapidly, we will be filling classes and we will need this FTE. As the budget gets tighter and tighter, I fear that I will be here again. So, in closing, the art department is a part of what makes this district special and excellent. So I just urge you all to think about the implications of this small piece to the larger puzzle. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you, that was very right. nice. <laughs> have any questions you know where to find me anybody have <laughs> question or comment no thank you yeah thank you very thank much. you and I, I don't think we would disagree with anything I, I know <laughs> exactly um, thank you is there anybody else in the audience that wanted to participate as part of the public hearing on the budget no okay so um, what I will do now is ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Um, and I need a second. Second. Okay, so that's a motion by Ms. Cavanaugh, a second by Ms. Barath, um, and we'll do a roll call vote. So John? Yes. 
Uh, I'm a yes, Nancy. Yes. Jen? Yes. And Mina? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, what we are going to do, this is not the end of the discussion, but just for those of you who are watching, we're going to move into reports, then we'll go under new business and we'll have our discussion of the budget and our vote. So um, uh, yes, we are ready for Ms. King, who is right there. So we'll have our um, report, our athletic season update by um, our athletic director, Ms. King, as well as recognitions. So she is gathering a group right now <laughs> that is going to join us. So come on up. Welcome. Hi, Mrs. Grabmeyer. You've been here before. Um, if you guys, well, yes, yeah. You just, yeah, fill in here because there's not room for you behind the table. Do you want them to all just file in? I of? think so, yeah. So me. It's good. Come this way. I know. It's all good. Come this way. You, <laughs> you should be on camera. You know what? You we'll let each so plan be the boss of this. this. Where would you way, like guys. people to go? Yeah. Right here. In front of us. You're saying yeah. in, yeah. in front of me. Do it in front of us. Definitely. Yeah. You guys, I mean, if we want to see what's going on, we can stand up, yes, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you guys fill in. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, sorry there, everyone. That's okay. Now they can like see. It. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, well, thank you so much for having us here tonight to do a fall athletic update. Um, as you can see, we have uh, a lot of our athletes and some of our coaches here tonight, and we're really grateful for them giving up their time um, because lots of them are in season right now again and have a lot of homework preparing for midterms. So thank you for being here. Um, and thank you to the school committee uh, for having us here tonight. I um, feel so grateful to have the opportunity to take a few minutes to honor and recognize so many of these hardworking student athletes and coaches. Um, and we have what looks like a large sample, but is actually a small, small sample size of, of our athletic programs. Um, and we, this fall specifically, had an incredibly successful season. And certainly if you follow in the newspapers or you know look at the records, you can see that in a win-loss column. But um, at this stage, I think all of you know that we, uh, when we look at our athletic programs, it's so much more than the result of, of a game or a season. Um, and so while we have some of our most competitive student athletes and, and representatives of teams here tonight, um, you'll find in just hearing a few of them talk for a couple of minutes that these are also um, some of our most outstanding and best citizens um, who just were so fortunate to have them represent our athletic programs, but also our school community as a whole. Um, and they are impressive on a daily basis across the board. And so. Um, I could sit up here and talk about them all day, but I think it's much more um, informative and interesting to allow you and, and the community to hear from them. So um, again, they're here to just give a brief summary and highlight of their seasons. And so I'll kind of go team by team and you guys can sort of start and then we can shuffle through. Um, and one of our representatives from our cross country team is not here yet because she's actually at a meet. Okay. So she thought she'd make it back in time and um, so she's actually she needs competing to run faster. Right now. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so we're gonna start off um, with our field hockey program and so one of our captains, Hal where's Hal? I'm right here. Oh, Hal, is over here. <laughs> start with Hal. You can go, I'm gonna okay. let you go first so um, you can kind of come right here. Um, and so Hallie's just gonna share a, a little bit about the season and how it went, her experience. Yeah, so this past season was one of our most successful um, over the past few. We, uh, we ranked number one in the CBL along with many other um, teams in hockey players. And it was different this year because we had three freshmen on our team. And so everyone was a little nervous about how it was going to go, like how everyone was going to respond. And all the returners included them all so well. And it was really good team chemistry this year. And then one of our accomplishments off the field was raising money for Keith Smiley. Um, the Keystone Foundation, we raised $1,800 during our fundraiser. Awesome. Um, and so it's really fun to witness that game, and some of you I know are there and be part of it. And, and an amazing season overall. Um, multiple students who were Metro West Daily News uh, All-Stars and who were League All-Stars. Coach Joan Bannon, who's not here tonight, was Coach of the Year. So just um, awesome, awesome performance overall for the field hockey team and a great group of girls. So thanks for being here, Holly, to share a little bit. Right. So. Um, so 
next we have um, a good number of our volleyball <laughs> team here, which is awesome, and, and two of our coaches. So if I could um, take a minute and just ask whoever was going to speak, I believe Ivy and Angie, right? You guys were going to say a little bit. Yeah. Yes. And then if there's anything, coaches, that you want to add at the end, feel free. Okay? Come on up. <laughs> And Jill. So we have Ivy, yeah. Angie, and Jill. <laughs> so this season, our team is made up, of, made up of a lot of returners who brought experience, coupled with a lot of new players who brought talent to the team. And led by our incredible coaching staff, we moved from Division Two to Division One in our state tournament and still made it to the championship game. So it was an incredible season and a lot of fun. And it was a really great group of girls. We had a lot of energy, and we had really awesome determination throughout the whole season. And just the chemistry that we all shared was one of the main reasons why we made it so far and why we had such a fun and successful season. Awesome. Thank you, girls. Thank you. and backing of the administration and fans and um, so we're just really grateful to be playing here in Hopkinton. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and one of the things that I know I asked them to keep it brief but I'll just share really quickly um, some of the things that make this volleyball team so successful. If you ever happen to see them play in person or um, maybe on, on HCAM, the, as, as they talked about the chemistry they have, that you can actually see how much fun they're having on the court when they're playing together. It's, it's palpable. It's fun to watch. You get, they are so excited. Um, the newspaper articles also demonstrated that in some of the pictures. Um, but also the time that is taken to get to know our student athletes, the coaching staff isn't giving themselves enough credit. Um, the time they take to get to know their student athletes, not just as volleyball players, but as people. Um, and, and really working together to help promote that, that citizenship and, and doing the right thing and also being competitive at the same time. Um, it's woven into everything they do. So um, unbelievable accomplishment to move up from Division Two to Division I uh, state champs last year and to make it back to the state finals. It's, that's pretty much unheard of. So um, unbelievable group of girls, lots of success on the court, but who they are as a group is, is I think what really is, is telling about them and really stands out. So. Thank you so much for being here tonight. All right. All right. Football, you guys want to come up next? The football came in really cool outfits, too. So I know they look very You got it. OK. Um, so we have. Um, our, our leadership here, and I'm going to let um, Coach Gerard start with some introductions of, of his teammates and then whoever wanted to speak, you can step forward. Thank you, Ms. First, thank you for the uh, invitation tonight and uh, the recognition is much appreciated. Uh, I'd like to introduce our senior football captains, uh, Connor Hebert, Anthony Farina, Alex McDonald, Matt Lindquist, and Mike Dianelli, who will speak on our team's behalf. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm Mike Dianelli. just wanted to Start out by congratulating the other Fox Sports teams on this big volleyball and the all the field hockey and cross country um, on the success this year. We also want to thank the administration, um, the boosters, the athletic department, and the town as a whole. And uh, specifically, Ms. Katie Gallagher, she puts in. Um, you know, we've been here since, she's been here since our junior year. She's usually our first round varsity, so you can see firsthand every step for us. Um, in terms of the season, um, Everyone saw the wins and losses that we had, but the thing that makes me and my coach captain most proud is you know the stuff that people didn't see, like the off-season list that we put into the sophomore year, and the practice field at 90 degree heat or 35 degree cold rainy days, we didn't want to be there. Um, so that's just us grinding together throughout those times is what brought us together and what ended up leading to our success. Uh, this senior class has been a pretty rough season last year, going four and seven, but we were able to turn it around and use that, use that those losses to have a successful season. Thanks, Mike. Anything you want to add, Coach? All right. Well, and, and a, a couple quick things to add. So a very humble group standing before us here, um, and and 
certainly one that I know is not focused on any type of individual accolades, um, but both the coaching staff and um, the team are always the first to give credit to the people that they work with. Um, Coach Gerard was the recipient of um, the Coach of the Year Award this year, as was Marjorie Bradmeyer, which I didn't say for volleyball, um, the TVL Coach of the Year Award, and um, also New England Patriots Coach of the Week, and then also Globe Coach of the Year, and all those things which we congratulated him on, and he was the first to say, this is a, this is a staff award, it's not an individual award. Um, sign of a true leader right there that, that runs this program. And the same is true for um, the people that are standing right here in front of you. These young men um, are the first to give credit to their teammates. Um, all have had incredibly successful individual seasons along with some of their teammates. And when you talk to them about it, they just talk about the strength of the team, how well they practice together, how well they work together. Um, so much time goes into football, but so much time goes into um, community service and, and doing so many other things that help make them the type of group that they are um, and struggled a little bit last year record-wise and still season was successful. This year, same type of behavior, character, all those things and things came together in a way that made this season particularly special and just can't thank you guys enough for the leadership that you show on the football field, but in, in our school and in our community on a daily basis. You guys do a fantastic job, so congratulations on a great season, and thanks for being here. Really Thank appreciate you. it. I saw, I'm going to go with Rachel next, is that okay? <laughs> I saw, so, so Rachel, I told them you were coming from your meet, so, oh, yes, okay, so come on up. Um, so Rachel Bully is here as a member of the girls cross country team and just if you could just share a few thoughts on the season and how it went for you that would be great. Yeah sure. Um, this year we had a great season. It was a bit of a transition year because we got a new coach and we lost some of our top runners um, from last year but um, Coach Pam is an awesome coach and we got some good freshmen so we ended up doing better than we thought we would. Um, even though we didn't Thanks, Rachel. And if you ever have a chance to come to Hopkinton State Park and see one of the races, and I'm sure you can attest to this, but so can I as a spectator. That's a really fun atmosphere, a beautiful atmosphere too, right? And um, you see the way that the both the boys and the girls cross country team bond and, and come together to really compete and have fun and improve week after week. So thank you so much for being here for sharing a little bit about your experience. So next we have, um, these are our golf captains, so Matt Epstein, Ben Shere, and Tom Leone, and, and Coach Bliss unexpectedly was unable to make it, but he was planning to be here tonight. Um, so I'm going to let them share a little bit about how awesome their season was, so I believe Ben's going to speak on behalf of the team and share a little bit about it. Yeah, so I'm Ben Shere, and um, this year was really just an all-around amazing year for us. We came this year, and a lot of people outside of our team had a lot of low expectations mainly because the teams before us had such great talent and a lot of people were saying this team just didn't have the talent this year and we couldn't live up to the teams before us who had won so many titles. So, but I know we, Matt and Tom, personally came into the season with one goal and that was winning the TDL title on our way to the state championship. That was the ultimate goal and we didn't want to settle for anything less. And throughout the year, so many kids were putting in so much work, not just during practice, but outside of practice. Kids were practicing on their own and you could really see it when we went out in matches. We were just dominating everyone we played. And a couple times we would struggle, but we always seemed to bounce back. And towards the end of the season, we kind of just clicked and we hit this role where we didn't lose a match for some really long span of time. And we, we had this chemistry that developed between all the kids that were playing. And it was just an amazing feeling being on this team. And it was just something that I hadn't had in any of the other years playing on the golf team. And this year really stood out. And we went into sectionals and we won for the first time in a long time. And then we went to the States with this level of confidence that we had that it was just amazing. And we won States for the first time since 2004 back when Keegan Bradley was on the team. He's now a PGA Pro, so it was great being in that elite club with him. And afterwards, it was the most surreal, surreal feeling ever. Just being a state championship, state champion, we couldn't have done any better. And it was just all our hard work really paid off. And Miss King also 
wanted me to talk a little bit about um, kind of what we did for the other teams. I know me and Tom were um, leaders of, a um, couple of the leaders of Hillary Thrillers, which was a group of kids who kind of got together and built this fan support. Um, a large part of it was for the football team, where we would tailgate for the games, thanks to a really generous support from the football team who really funded our food. And before every game, we would be there grilling and cooking. And it, it's been there the past couple of years, but the level of support we got this year was just crazy and mind-blowing, because if you ever came to a football game, about 30 minutes beforehand, there would just be mass crowds of kids all by the beach, bleachers getting ready to go, just eating food and hanging out, and getting ready to support the great team. And we kind of used this fan base we had to spread it to all the other teams, too. I know the football team not only had a full house every time it seemed like, but the volleyball games were packed, and the level of support our class gave all the other teams was just amazing. I think it was a huge part of the success that all the fall teams had this year because every team was really rooting for the other team and we wanted each other to do good. The football kids would be asking about the golf team and the volleyball team and the cross country team. And I know us personally, we'd be checking scores constantly and go to every football game we could. And it was just an amazing feeling. And I think a lot of other teams can agree that this fall season was one of the best moments of my life. And it's something that I'll always remember, just having this success from the entire class and not just one team. It was just an amazing time for all of us. Thanks so much for sharing that, Ben. So just um, to kind of quickly go back to the golf season really quickly, um, I think that one thing that, that stood out to me as an observation and, and being able to have the opportunity to, to watch this special group go out and play, um, one thing that's a little bit different about golf is when you advance into um, the postseason, only six members of the team actually get to play. Um, so it's a little bit different than um, other sports that even you, you might not play, you're on the sideline, you're in uniform. Um, and so for golf what, at the state championship this year, um, it was really cool to see those who were out there playing and then those who were integral parts of the team during the regular season who were there to support each other. Um, and, and Ben's heard me say this a couple times, but I'm okay with him hearing me say it again. Um, he was, ben, ben didn't play in that, in that part of the tournament, um, but was an incredible leader throughout the season on the course through his play and as a captain. And he was out there essentially with a map directing traffic for his other teammates that were there saying, okay, if we go to hole eight right now, we'll be able to see Matt and then we'll be able to catch, you know, um, Jack or Tom on the way back at hole 12. And it was just, it was so cool to see and they were so into it. And it was an incredible experience to watch a group of people so supportive of each other, some of whom weren't getting any of the glory based on the, a number on a scorecard, um, but they were still experiencing it in such a real way and that contributed to getting there. Um, and that is just, I think, such a, a testament to this group. And it's something that I'm sharing with you about golf, but I could share similar experiences about football, volleyball, cross country, field hockey, and some of the teams that aren't here. So, so that's, I think, something that as an athletic department we take so much pride in, but ultimately <coughs> these are the people that are, are making it happen. Um, and with the Hillers Grillers, to, to quickly talk about that, um, I think Ben nailed it to say that it was a, this has just been a really special year, um, a group of special leaders, those who are participating in the athletic programs and those who are there in support of it, incredible parents, um, incredible community members, um, support from a program, football, providing this food before games, allowing this type of spirit and, and community support to happen. Um, and just one special moment this year from the Hillers Grillers was um, we had a, a homecoming football game this fall against Westwood, and it was a 50th year reunion for um, the for Hopkinton's class of, am I doing my math right, 1967? Is that their 50th? Yeah, I think it was 67, yeah. Uh, and so really cool before the game to see some of those uh, alumni up tailgating with, with these um, amazing kids. The kids are feeding them, they're engaging in conversation, hearing about the history of the program, and it was just, a, it was a special sight to see and something that um, I personally never want to take for granted because I don't know that it happens in, in other towns this way. And it was no directive that they got. They just did it because it's the right thing to do and um, made it their mission to make other people feel special that night and to give them a special night even though they're the ones attending high school. So um, a small example but a really important one of just 
the types of things that these incredible athletes are doing, and it's happening on a smaller scale every day. Every day these types of things are happening. We don't see them all the time, uh, but you hear about them in passing, and it's just a reminder of how lucky we are and how fantastic these, these kids are. And so just really appreciate them all taking the time to be here tonight. So I'll let you guys go, and I have a couple other quick things to say. Thank you so much for presenting. <laughs> Um, just a couple other um, notes on some of our teams that aren't here tonight. Um, improvements from everyone overall. Um, girls soccer made the tournament for the first time in a while. Um, improvements in, in many of our other programs, our cheer program. Uh, boys soccer battling through some injuries but continuing to compete. And I think that the really cool thing that you're seeing there is that you're seeing kids who are part of their program going on to participate in other seasons taking their experiences, learning from them. Um, they've created a winning culture here at this school and in this community. And again, that when I say winning, I don't just mean because they're earning, you know, winning TVL championships and state championships. Winning in that they do things the right way, they take pride in what they do, um, and they really and truly are just fantastic representatives <coughs> of of Hiller Athletics and what we'd hope in ultimately Hopkinton High School and Middle School. So um, just very thankful for all of them, for an incredible coaching staff that works tirelessly to provide our student athletes with a great experience. Um, and also <coughs> wanted just to take a moment to really sincerely thank our building administration at the high school and the middle school our school committee for all the hard work, our central administration. Um, we feel so supported, and I know that it's, other communities don't always have this type of cohesiveness and, and feeling of, of support, and, and we feel that, and I am just really sincerely appreciative on behalf of all the people that you're seeing stand behind me and all of our programs. So just want to thank you so much for that and allowing the opportunity for these outstanding um, young men and women to come and talk a little bit about their their seasons. So thank you so much for having us. That concludes our report. I don't know if there are any questions or anything um, anything else you were hoping to to learn tonight. Um, are there any we have. questions? No, no questions. Just an awesome job, you guys. Really, yeah. really proud. Congratulations, of really fantastic for all the teams. Yeah. Thank Congratulations you so much for having us to all of you. And you know what? Really, thank you so much. You're such good ambassadors for the district. You all are, and I know. Sports is one of the things that you do. Um, so thank you and congratulations and good luck with exams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so, you so much, Ms. Thank, thank you. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, the crowd is thinning significantly <laughs> as we approach our uh, our more difficult task for tonight. So let me let me let things settle here for a second. Okay. So um, we have uh, John Catino from the Board of Selectmen here, as well as Pam Waxlax from the Appropriations Committee. So if you would like to join us, you're welcome to. Um, you you don't feel you don't have to weigh in if you don't want to, but please come up and join us. We're going to start our budget conversation. Um, and again, just as a reminder to what I went through earlier, we have to vote tonight to submit a budget to the town um, by tomorrow. That's the deadline that we agreed to. Uh, and as you know, under the charter, we need to agree to a deadline every year. So um, I don't know if, if uh, Kathy, if you want to sort of start, start the budget conversation by saying anything, or you want us to jump right into it. <laughs> I'm not sure. Can you hear me? I can hear oh, you. Oh, there you go. There you are. Oh, um, there you go. I guess the only thing I wanted to add was, was so to, cool. to thank everybody for the participation through the department. Um, I think you obviously did a great job of summarizing the amount of time and attention and effort. Um, but I'd also really like to uh, thank appropriation the Board of Selectmen for I feel that the process from the beginning has been really collaborative and 
mounted in a very open um, process with different lenses. So thank you, everybody, and um, I'm happy to be able to participate in this there tonight. Okay, thanks. Thank um, does anybody want to just sort of get the, the ball rolling, start the discussion? John, I don't know if you want to weigh in or just, you know, call my name when you have something to say. I mean, if you want me to start it. Sure. I mean, there's, there's not a lot. I, I don't think there's a lot to see, given the, the length of the process that we've gone through and where we've arrived. I think I agree with Jean that this is very much just a next step in the process and by no means the end of the process. But at the moment, I think what the process we've gone through, the process the administration has gone through, has required some really tough and landed us with a bunch that I don't think anybody ever saw early on in the process. But I think it's where we are. And, and as I, I often say, it's, it's our job to present the most responsible budget that we can. And while to people who do not follow the process as close, the budget might look high from a responsible perspective, it is responsible with respect to the programming that we need to deliver. Um, I, I, too, look forward to working with the Board of Selectmen and the Appropriation Committee to continue to refine this, but um, at the moment, I feel like this is, this is where we should be. Anybody else? I can go. Sure. Um, I think throughout this process, of course, it was, for me, the first budget season, and, um, you know, throughout the past few months that we have been through the budget process. I have asked my questions on ev at every meeting. Uh, I've raised my concerns. Um, you know, I've talked about the uh, reduction of three teachers in middle school. Uh, we had talked about, I mean, the big <coughs> ones that come to my mind. Um, also, the $50,000 towards the special education that we talked about. Um, we also talked about, uh, you know, the school supplies being shifted from parents back to the budget, operational budget. All of these questions come to um, my mind, and also um, about projections and the confidence um, with the projections. I asked all the questions, and throughout the process, Dr. McLeod and her team gave responses. Um, again, um, can I say that with my knowledge and what I have seen that I feel 100% confident because I'm not in the weeds, I can't say that. But I have confidence in the administrative team. They have given um, that assurance. When we asked about the reduction for the teachers, um, I had asked Mr. Keller and I had asked uh, Dr. McLeod, and they both feel that that would work and the quality of the education would not go down. So to me, that is very important. So I rely on their expertise to a great degree, what they think, they feel confident, and you know we have Dr. Kavanaugh here now. She's the one who's gonna be leading the charge going into next year. To me, their confidence is extremely important in the process. Um, that's where I'm coming from, and um, that's what I feel about it at the moment. Um, you know, obviously, most of what I feel has already been said, but I think one of the big things that's come out of this, a lot of discussions for me is, I don't know that the general public understands how so much of this budget is not just what we want, or even necessarily what we think we need, but it's dictated to us by things that we can't control. Um, for example, the buses, transportation, or um, students moving into our district to require special education service services or students who are already in our district whose services change. There's so much that is not, you know, us sitting around or, or, or members of the leadership team sitting around saying this is what we want. It's this is what we have no choice. We have to provide this because this is what the law says we have to provide. So the piece that involves general education instruction is going up by one quarter of a percent next year. That's like almost minus really in my mind because the cost of everything has probably gone up by more than a quarter of a percent. So it's, you know, being 7% over is, 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 you know, of course not ideal, but it's not really 
because we are saying we want all these things or we'd like to have all these things or we want to make these changes. I mean, we heard from our, our, our department head who's concerned about losing a program that is in her mind and in a lot of people's mind essential for instruction. So I think that's the most important piece maybe for the community to understand that maybe they don't is that we are sort of at the mercy of the law and then that 0.25% is what we would like to do with education, you know? Yeah. And, I, and I also feel that <coughs> at the end of the day, we should be able to reach every child, right? I, I think to me that's the most important aspect in, in all of this. Um, all of these numbers must ultimately reach that goal. And if our administrative team, and very competent administrative team, we have asked this question of Mrs. DeBow, Mrs. Carver, uh, Mrs. Bilalo, Mr. Keller, Mr. Bishop, and all the department heads. And um, they're working under some constraints, clearly. And uh, to me, it seemed like there is a balance that is being drawn out um, and ear to ear. And I think, to me, again, that assurance is important that we can reach every child wherever they are at. That is crucial. So we have been through this painstakingly long process that we have put so much attention. We were talking about different types of markers and things that were really nitty gritty. And I, I think we had all hoped that we would come in below where we did uh, with respect to our fiduciary responsibility to the town. Uh, I think that part is what it is with all of our legal obligations of what we absolutely have to do. The one thing that I was very moved by tonight was Colleen's yep. presentation about the ceramics class, and I do have, I, I have arrived at a place I did not expect to arrive. It's some discomfort um, over the number of students, and I, I feel like in, I, I'm going to have tomatoes thrown at me or something, but the number of students who were being reached in that program who were not being reached um, in other ways, kids with special needs, kids with different uh, different profiles than with the, that are more artistically inclined, and that does seem like an important piece that, that pains me to see. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I think that, um, you know, it is very, it, you know, she's obviously very, very passionate, very compelling, um, very articulate, and I think you know, what stood out to me particularly, you know, there is good news in this budget. We are able to add staff or we are planning to add staff to address a critical problem that we have had at the center school in terms of enrollment and in terms of space. And had we had the physical space to address those enrollment needs, the number of new staff would not be so high this year because we would have been doing it incrementally across years. So we have the wonderful, finally we have arrived at the day that we are moving into our new elementary school and I personally became involved in that project, I believe um, 16 years ago. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. So there's a lot to celebrate there, but um, this is in, in combination with the fact that the town is also opening a new library this year and opening a new DP, DPW this year. Um, you know, this is a, a just a remarkable, challenging year across the board for every town department. And I want, um, before we go too much further in the conversation, to just really say that, you know, as Dr. McLeod um, pointed out, really from the beginning, uh, Mr. Catino's here, and I really want to thank him. This really has been. Um, in my experience, one of the more open and collaborative processes that we have had. Doesn't mean that we're in a better position this year than we have been. And um, unfortunately, that's meant a little more time with Jean Bridgman than Mr. Catino is probably planning to spend, and it's not over. Um, but what I do think, you know, what, what really just struck me, um, both when Mr. Worrell was speaking as well as Mrs. Giannino, even though we're able to add staff at the elementary level where we need it, and even though some of the reductions that we're making are enrollment driven, particularly at the middle school, what's bothering me particularly is listening to Mrs. Giannino, this is the first time that we're really talking about a program, 
um, and not necessarily an enrollment driven decision and that's really challenging and I I'm not I'm not going to try to take us backwards and I'm not going to try to make that number bigger but I want all of us to keep in our mind and be mindful that that's the conversation that we're going to be having going forward if we're not able to to figure something out with our partners on the town and that's the conversation that every other town department is going to have and it's just as significant for different reasons um, you know there's a lot a lot of pride in this town in terms of what we have built here our education is unparalleled in the state and as are many of our town services nobody wants less of that but it's you know there are, uh, is due to the new growth there's just a lot coming due all at the same time and um, it's just sort of a perfect storm this year so I feel for myself I don't think that there is any low-hanging fruit here that we can take off the table and reduce this number in a way that would make any difference. We're not $50,000 off the number that we were asked to hit. We're $1.6 million off that number. I don't, I'm not facile with the numbers on the town side of the budget, but I know that they are similar in magnitude. And so my, my recommendation um, tonight is that we vote the budget that, you know, that Dr. McLeod and her team have worked so hard to put together. And this is, the point in time where we are but it's not the end of the process and you know mr. Catino and I had this conversation earlier today but the only way to get through this is to go forward together and so obviously we're very committed to doing that and working with our appropriations partners as well as the Board of Selectmen um, to see as a town what we can all do to um, to work this out in a way that provides the services that are increasingly uh, not the increasing number of people who live here and the increasing diversity of the people that we're supporting here need in terms of services but also what they can afford in terms of taxes and so we just have to work together on, on that and um, you know so that's on you and me to help people um, continue to work well together and to try to make that happen but I you know I absolutely want to let you both weigh in if there are questions or concerns or suggestions that you have for us definitely want to hear them um, as I said earlier Ms. Roback had sent a really um, very comprehensive recommendation around the class sizes at K and 1 which we will keep in mind as we go forward for sure but um, I think you know at this point my recommendation is to just go forward where we are and, and keep on working but please chime in <laughs> well I'll, I'll be um very few words I lost my voice <clears throat> but no actually you put it <clears throat> excuse me I'm sorry you put it very well that's exactly what we have to do is, is work together because um, it is uh, it is a perfect storm this year or an imperfect storm actually yeah. um, that being said we just have to make sure that it doesn't happen next year or the year after and we just can't uh, try and you know we have the best high school we have the best we have what the 151st best school system in the country we have our public safety is rated number four in the country and we have all these great things but we have to um, let the townspeople understand that what price is this excellence and is this excellence sustainable um, and that's what we have to look at in the future um, we're going to have to get through this year, and we're going to have to do the best we can, and, and you guys have done a wonderful job. I, I mean, my when, when Colleen was talking about her art programs, my, I, my eyes were welling up because um, I'm the only one out of seven in my family that didn't go into teaching. So I get it. I get the, the, the heart and soul that goes into teaching and being an educator. Um, and I also get how important art is. Art was... I got into every college I applied to because of my portfolio, because I had great art teachers. Um, and it's, uh, you know, and, and to cut programs or to change the um, en enrollment numbers, I mean, the, the number of, the, the um, ratio of students to teachers, it, it, it's, they're, they're, everything has to be on the table at some point. And the same thing with the rest of the town. But we're going to work together when we get through this, and, and we just have to have the townspeople understand that uh, we're doing the best we can, and we want to have the best for everybody. 
and it, as you said, but at, at the right price for everybody also. So thanks for bearing with my voice. I, <laughs> I totally apologize. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Pam? So I um, obviously haven't been here since you guys haven't seen me in a while, but I'm filling in tonight for Rebecca and Mike, who were not able to be here. And I think what I can honestly say from our perspective is we receive it so late in the process. Everybody's gone through everything. By the time the numbers get to us, I really would just like to see the school committee and the Board of Selectmen continue to work hand in hand and have everybody on the Board of Selectmen, everybody on the school committee completely understand what this whole picture is looking like to the town and, and how we can make it work, basically. No, I totally agree. I mean, I remember when I first came on the school committee, there were many years that were very, very difficult budgets, and we ended up having, you know, <coughs> on a Saturday, a joint meeting with all three committees it lasted, you know, well into the afternoon, and um, it was very difficult, but it's, I, you know, just much more productive to have one conversation with everyone being able to be a part of it, understanding what the trade-offs are that every department is being asked to make because at the end of the day, you know, these are services that everybody in the town needs and everybody in the town pays for. Uh, it's not just, you know, it's our job to advocate for the best educational program um, that we can. And I think that despite the challenges, we are still doing that. Um, we certainly, as you can see, have a lot of essentially fixed costs, as Ms. Rothermick pointed out to me this year. Um, an unusual amount, but um, yeah. So, so I, I mean, I think we're all sort of circling around saying the same thing at this point. Um, I do, before we take a vote, really want to thank um, Susan and Carol and and Kathy and the entire administrative team. This is um, a rough year to come on as your first year, but you've added a lot of value. You've brought a lot of really great, fresh perspective and identified a lot of things for us that may not be coming to fruition this year, but I think will serve the district well and the town well in the years to come. And so that's something that really has stood out to me and I really do appreciate this year. Um, and I, you know, I just, in particular there I know there was so much back and forth and back and forth and going back and looking again and talking more and um, this was a tremendously intensive process for all of you when you're doing all of the other things that you do to keep the lights on and the students safe and learning every day so I really want to thank you sincerely for all of the time and work that went into this um, and, and recognize what a challenge it is and also say, I'm sorry, but it's not over. So uh, we're going to have to keep on going with that. So unless anybody else would like to chime in, any of our partners on the computer here? Okay. I think then that I am ready for a motion to approve the FY19 budget recommendation of the superintendent. So moved. And a second? Second. Was that Mina? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so a motion by Jen, a second by Mina, and we'll do a roll call. Mina? Yes. Jen? Yes. Nancy? Yes. I'm a yes. And John? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, so thank you very much, all of you. Obviously, haven't seen the last of us. Um, and then, Susan, will you be... Or you or Dr. McLeod will be submitting this tomorrow to the town manager? I, I can do that. The number? Okay. Yes. Yep. So so you will have the number. Norman will have the number tomorrow, but um, I know you all have the presentation, and you just let us know when we're we'll getting set, together. We'll, to, we'll set up the budget yeah. committee meeting. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We appreciate it. Um, feel better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't feel badly. I just have no voice. <laughs> um, okay. So, our next item of business is a celebratory one. I am very happy to report that when we met earlier in executive session, the school committee did vote to, um, to approve the contract for Dr. Carol Cavanaugh to be our next superintendent of schools. We're very pleased by um, 
having Dr. Kavanaugh come on board and very excited to actually sign this document. So um, I will let you all know that we have agreed to a three-year contract with Dr. Kavanaugh for a salary of $180,000. The terms are very similar to the contract that Dr. McLeod has with us um, now. And so Dr. Kavanaugh and I will sign this ceremoniously and we will be all official. So I guess it's awkward to say welcome to Hopkinton because you're already <laughs> here, but I will say, uh, oh, and we have to repeat our vote. So I should probably be doing that first. So, um, right, I'm sorry, excuse me. So we do have to repeat our vote in public session as well. So I do need a motion to approve the um, superintendent's contract for FY19 through FY21. So moved. And a second? A second. Um, okay, so that is a motion by Ms. Kavanaugh, a second by Ms. Barath, and um, N M Mina? Yes. N um, Jen? Yes. Nancy? Yes. yes. I'm a yes, John? Yes. Yes. Okay. I hesitated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm That's a delay. delay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now it's official. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I, am, um, I will let you sign this too. What is this, the 11th? Okay, so now it's, I think your line got cut off, but you can figure that out. Okay, so in, um, we, this is our second opportunity for public comment. If there's anybody in the public that would like to comment, no. Nope. Um, okay, so then without further ado, I think we're ready to adjourn. So it is, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second? Second. Um, okay, so a motion by Ms. Devlin, a second by Ms. Barath. Mina? Yes. Jen? Yep. Nancy? Yes. I'm a yes. John? Yes. Okay, so we are adjourned at 8.13. Thank you all very much, and we will see you here. Um